My name is Dr. Suzanne Yelstead, and I'm the director of the Institute for Cellular Therapeutics at the University of Louisville. The Institute for Cellular Therapeutics is a multidisciplinary group. We have about 55 people total. We have eight faculty. We really foster collaboration. Most people don't realize it, but after an organ transplant, patients have to take 15 to 25 pills a day for the life of their transplant, or they run the risk of rejecting it. On top of that, um, the medicines themselves make the patient very prone to infection, and infections that wouldn't be harmful to someone who wasn't on those immunosuppressive medicines. A transplant recipient's life at the present time is not easy. It's a, it's a real challenge. And if we can improve that by inducing tolerance and eliminate the need for those immunosuppressive drugs, it would be a huge improvement in quality of life and also substantially reduce the cost of organ transplantation in the long term. The general focus of research right now has been to find a way to trick the immune system so that the body thinks that the transplanted organ is good and not bad and doesn't try to reject it, and that's called tolerance. One of the major focuses of our research is to use a cell that we discovered in the bone marrow called the facilitating cell to induce tolerance to transplanted kidneys and hearts. Another area that it would have a huge impact is in reconstruction of burn victims and massive tissue injury. If we can induce tolerance in those patients and eliminate the need for immunosuppression, it would benefit virtually millions of people worldwide. Bone marrow transplantation has been shown to cure a number of autoimmune disorders, including multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, Crohn's colitis, even type 1 diabetes, all of which are autoimmune diseases. It's estimated that about 4% of the world's population is affected with one of more than 60 autoimmune disorders. And the limitation until now has been how to find a way that is safe enough to do bone marrow transplantation for non-malignant but life-threatening autoimmune disorders. Our first protocol, which is currently FDA approved and underway, is for multiple sclerosis. When we first listed our multiple sclerosis trial on clinicaltrials.gov, we had an overwhelming response. And one of the things that really was poignant to me was that people living with autoimmune diseases live in fear of disease progression. With bone marrow transplantation, you can actually halt the progression of most autoimmune disorders, and that's been shown now in the clinic. One could look upon this approach in the long term as disease prevention, so that rather than waiting until a patient was pretty far along with their progression of their disorder, like MS, one could intervene right after early diagnosis and halt any further disease progression. Our long-term goal would be, for example, for a child diagnosed with type 1 diabetes to intervene in the honeymoon period before they've lost all the ability to make in insulin and stop the disease progression at that point before the complications of diabetes have, have taken place. Most people think of bone marrow transplantation as the type of bone marrow transplants for leukemia where you completely wipe out the patient's own bone marrow and replace it with the donor marrow. And that requires a long hospitalization and is very intense for therapy. The approach that we have developed actually allows bone marrow transplants to be done as an outpatient. Until recently, most of the bone marrow transplants in humans have been done using the patient's own bone marrow. And one of the major challenges in that is that the autoimmune diseases are a bone marrow defect, and so essentially you're more prone to relapse. And now the focus is to find ways to make using a healthy bone marrow and immune system safe enough to apply to patients with autoimmune diseases. And that's what makes our protocol different from a number of other protocols that are being tested in the clinic. The red blood cell disorders, um, the most predominant of which are sickle cell disease and thalassemia, affect a large percentage of the world's children. And it's been known for about 10 years now that bone marrow transplantation is the only cure. However, only about one in five candidates for transplantation has a perfect match. Our protocol, which is actively approved in, in treating patients, allows for 
a more mismatched donor so that a mom or a dad could donate bone marrow to the patient and virtually anyone who has a family member willing to donate marrow could have a transplant. We've successfully transplanted two children with sickle cell disease now. Both of them needed transfusions before their bone marrow transplants and both have not been transfused since their transplant and they're making normal healthy red blood cells. I'm very hopeful. Um, we're analyzing our data from the hearts and kidneys that we've done and I'm really excited about the results from the two sickle cell patients who now are healthy, normal children who seem to be cured of their red blood cell disorder. And um, I'm really excited for the future. It's, it's just very gratifying to see our work going from the laboratory to the clinic. And it's still research in many ways, but um, I'm really pleased with the progress that we've made. One of the major challenges is actually funding. And that's where um, NFCTR and, and UofL have been really critical to our being able to move these, these clinical studies into the clinic and, and treat patients. It's that window of time between the basic science discovery, which is funded by the NIH, and the transition to treating patients that is a catch-22 in terms of obtaining sufficient funds to be able to move ahead. Once we obtain proof of concept, we can go to the insurance companies and convince them that this is now a therapeutic option. As collaborating centers join us, we are able to move more rapidly to proof of concept and uh, we also have the added benefit that they're some of the leaders in the field and, and I think we really benefit from working with them. Through our new collaborations with Duke and Northwestern University, we're reaching even further and sharing information and I think both sides really benefit greatly from that. If our clinical trials are as successful as we think they are, this will be life-changing for a number of diseases. Um, I could envision a time when people with autoimmune disease could be transplanted early after diagnosis and disease prevention permanently established. For organ transplant recipients, our goal is to induce tolerance so that they don't require the immunosuppressive drugs that take such a, a toll on patients right now over time. The, uh, the total health care costs for people suffering with these over 20 diseases that we hope to treat is staggering. If we are successful in finding a cure for these various diseases, the cost of health care would be substantially reduced worldwide. For more information, please visit nfctr.org. Thank you.